Welcome to the Disconnection Podcast. My name is Kyle Nielsen, and I'll be your host for today's show. On this episode of Disconnection, we're going to be speaking to Santi Bayo. Si. Si. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be speaking about art and emotions and relationships. So, Santi, thank you very much for allowing me to interview you. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and let's start at the beginning. Why don't you tell me where you grew up? Uh, thank you first in the first place. Thank you for having me today. I'm super glad to speak with you and all people that is gonna listen. So yeah, I grew up. Uh, I born in in Madrid and I grew up in a little house in the middle of the forest. But then uh, my family decided to move to to Valencia, and we came to the city. Just city, just buildings and that, and was like a a little bit a, a change in. In my life, but, uh, but I enjoyed. I I enjoyed the city. I enjoyed this, the the streets and the the different parts of them. So, how old were you when you moved from the forest, you know, very uh, um, spacious life, to the city? Yeah, I was like uh, seven, six years. So I remember a little bit things from that, but mostly my entire life I I'm being here and I like I here I, in Valencia. Yeah, I feel it really connected with the city and the environment. But it's good because we have a uh, sea, the sea, and the beach. So it's it's a nice it's a nice way to to go to the beach and enjoy that. And enjoy the sand, the, the waves, the ocean. Yeah, I'm, I'm super close to the um, to the sea because my mother's family were uh, fishermen. Okay, fishermen. And yeah, they, they raise in the um, in the Cabañal um, neighborhood. So I'm super close to the sea, and I really like uh, to swim and to. I don't know, it's super normal for me because it's super near here. Right, right. Uh, so what was family life uh, like back at home? Did you have brothers, sisters? Yeah, I have uh, three brothers. Three brothers. Older than me. Mm -hmm. The oh, youngest. I am the youngest, yeah. <laughs> and they are me all... Me too. No way. Yeah. You, how, how many brothers? Uh, I have one older brother. Cool. Yeah. I have three. <laughs> <laughs> and they are all guys, so they are all old men and... There, there, there were uh, really um, nice, like ni there are su super nice people, but we are all are very different to each other. So we we raised in a very different way. So each brother has her, his own like a strong personality and a strong beliefs or his own way to to live. And like we we like we explored that when when we were childs. But was not so so easy because we we have like travel with the family. My my father was not super a good man, so he wasn't a super good man. Yeah, no, he was he was actually not good because he 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 treated bad my mom and also the mom of my brothers, my two older brothers. They have a other mother, a different mother. Okay. And my my father is like like was mean with with the with this with this woman. So I raised a very feminist in that way, very feminist. This yeah, uh, in a feminine manner. In a feminine, and I really want. To, uh, and I, is that because you related more to your mother? Absolutely right. Yeah, my mother like really helped me out and raised me in a good way, and I and and, and I tried to have uh, the positive as aspects of of my father, but was really difficult because was a very close, emotionally close person. So. I, I saw I saw like the difference though no, between my father that was a really close mind person with a very like problems with emotions and my mother that was really open and my mother always tried to help my father but my father was too like too outside to be helped stubborn headed yeah exactly in a sense uh, so it, did your father and mother stay together no no they split up <clears throat> the the last year more than split up they have like a uh, trial thing divorce with, more than divorce like mm. and but they finally came to an agreement and like my my father cannot see my mom because a restraining it's, order yeah exactly yeah so uh, my mother is very very good now she lives in a little house in the that's awesome in a part of the city and the center part of the city, a place where everyone lives, no? It's yeah. not like the place where I live that is different. And I don't know something, nothing about my father. I, there, there was like seven years since I last talked to him. And, and you're how old right now? 
What? How old are you right now? How old? 25, yeah. 25, okay. So last time you spoke to him was when you were 18? Yeah, 19, 18, something yeah. like that. I, I crossed with him many times, but it was like... You didn't say anything? Anything. Yeah. Maybe hi, if my mother say like, say hi to your father and this, and say hi. But I did you Did yeah. you think that growing up and being the youngest of boys, that your brothers tried to emphasize more their masculinity? And be, you know, almost they tried to become accepted by your father. Yeah, in a way we all try to be accepted by our father. Because when you raise with, with a father that is very, very, like, have a really strong character. Never say to you, like, I love you or forgive me, something like or that. Or hug you. Or thank you. Or hug me. Never Nothing touched you. Like that, never touched me. And also forbid me to hug my mother or like kiss my mother or say my mother I, that I love her. It's it's really weird because you try to to be accepted by your father because he's your father, but at the same time, it's not your father. It's some guy that is messing up with you and your family. Mm -hmm. So it's a really weird balance. My my brother Ricardo is, was like in many years like was like very masculine, very strong to. To, to be like a little bit against or to be like the alpha, yeah, you know, right. Like my my father was really like a big alpha, and my brother like tried to to catch him and and that. And I and I prefer to close my door mm -hmm. and draw all day and make drawings all day and reading books and all that. Is that where your artistic uh, passion developed? Was you way. know almost in a sense removing yourself from the aggression. And a lot, and trying to express yourself in a different manner. Yeah, my my mother gave it to me when I was like five or four four years, a uh, sketchbook. Cool. And the first thing I painted was my brother, and uh, I began to paint, to paint, to paint. And when I was uncomfortable with my family, I came to my to my room and I was starting to paint, and, and I was very focused. This one, this honestly, this one one of the things that really helped me to grow and like try to, to be better in, in many ways because when I was like a teenager I was so angry with the world I was super like pissed off about everything and you felt like nobody appreciated you yeah no, and this, I was I feel it like not un understand it no one would understand you yeah, yes in a, in a way that is not correct right because when when the years pass you realize that you that you were like in a mistake, no, to feel like alone in that way, right. and now I express very freely this matter because before I was super close. Anyone, nobody needs to know that the people is gonna I'll keep my problems to yeah, myself. The people is gonna think that I'm weak, right? That I'm sensitive, that I, you know, that I don't have um, passion for things, and then the the apathy came, no? You you became apathic, or you became like. And it, uh, nothing is going to bother you because you live in your own reality. Right. The reality that you can create behind a closed door in your artwork. Exactly. And it becomes almost an echo chamber of you remove yourself from the family problems, but then you also remove yourself from feeling. And you call it a problem. You know, you realize like, oh, I had sort of a problem. Uh, in that sense, do you mean that you... Uh, isolated yourself even from friendship yeah yeah I like when when I was a child or a, a teenager I I like to have friends I love I love my friends they are one of my most important parts on, on my life but I I never liked to I was uh, I was fine to having one two three friends no no more like that because and I was always understand by people that were like me a right. little bit, no? My 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 context was like like me, no? My friends they have also problems with the family, also that we understand each other. So it was nice at, at at the beginning, but then you you realize that anyone can do anything or understand you. And these last years, uh, like when I when I when I went to to the college and that, like I I began to realize that is more reality that I have because I was in my home, no? And my home was not a good place to, to develop yourself, basically. So because the, 
the restriction that you had on your that you placed on yourself for not allowing you know wanting to be secluded and not deal with things at what point in your life growing up whether it was a teenager or a young adult did you find that you could express yourself again and that you would be welcomed when you did ah i will i always been like like i always feel like accepted but not accepted. No, what was not a point when I was feeling like accepted all the time and I wasn't feel free. It's been a really hard work because my the, my family troubles really affects my emotion or my way to to create relationship with people. When I when I was a young adult or a, a teenager, when I when I found friends and also friends or girlfriends, something like that, that really. There are some, some people that I can talk about uh, things without thinking. But I'm like the kind of person that don't like to talk about bad things or the sad things. Mm-hmm. I'm really like, I, I really like to talk about other things that, that these things. So, uh, so do you mean less material, more conceptual? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Do, so let's talk about your artwork. You yeah. had um, You had an expression, a way to... Uh, find um, a safe place to be yourself with your artwork. Yeah. And what has the evolution of your artwork been? How has your artwork evolved? Always, I, I'm. I've been always like very interested in in the physical aspect of the bodies, or in the emotional aspect of the of the bodies of the minds of the. Like I always try to. To put something together in in the way that you um, you create like a subversion of senses, you know, like you you put you have uh, normal shapes or normal figures, but with other sense, like with an, another sense from the beginning. So when I when I started, I, I draw I, I like to to draw bodies, to draw hands, to draw faces, like to draw expressions. Mm-hmm. And these expressions, I keep growing and growing and growing, and I and I find no the, the way to to put myself or to put the the criticisms against society or like the criticisms with society that I have, and also like my personal experience is super like related to my art, like the, this this isolated bodies with not head and right. with different um, physics of expressions. No, it's like kind of a projection of myself and the way that I saw the, the thing. So I try to balance between human expression and like and, and other different senses or a simple ideas with complex meanings. Right. Yes. Oh, I, oh my God. It makes sense. That was great. <laughs> uh, I, I do enjoy your artwork. It is body silhouettes in odd shapes that are tangled and morphed. And uh, much of your art is not, you know, perfect bodies. They're twisted. You have arms coming out of legs, legs coming out of arms. Maybe there's multiple limbs and some bodies morph together. And the piece that you had created a couple of days ago for your uh, installment yeah. because you're in school, uh, was a silhouette of two bodies that connected at the lower abdominal region and then came up and were holding each other and, and touching each other. Can you talk about that piece a little bit? Yeah, it's. Um, I made that piece like really inspired. I remember the, the day when I, when I painted in, the, in my little notebook. That is something that I have always, a little notebook to, to make the, the draws. In this notebook? No, in this notebook, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's smaller than, oh, okay. than that. that it's, uh, just, um, a tiny notepad. A tiny notepad. Cool. This is my, I always have in my pocket, so I, I put it and I draw the, the idea and then... Whenever also, you want. Whenever you want, whenever I can. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I was trying to, to, to achieve this point, like, we, there are, like, two female bodies, but it's not gender. But they are related to to the the part that is like more important to the reproduction or like to to have these these two bodies united in in the in the pelvic you, region. Yeah, exactly. In the pelvic region creates like a a circle between them, and they 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 are hugging, so they are approaching, and they, they creates like a, a, a cycle. circle through the arms holding exactly. each other's bodies, as well as the connection at the bottom. 
and creates uh, um, I'm talking about uh, equal relationships about uh, no matter what kind of relationships that they, they they put you together even if you want or not so you need to deal with that so after you are together with someone you, you create a bond after you create a bond you need to deal with the the meaning that this bond has so the arms express the proximity of the uh, to have to have closer the, the body or to have far the body so it's kind of a duality i really like to talk about duality yes it's called like dualities that. yes uh the the artwork that you express yourself through sometimes doesn't have uh fully um comprehensible limbs so sometimes it's a limb and then it goes out into a jagged figure what what does that mean for you I what what is the expression of the limb that's not complete yeah it's it's a working body it's a body that can work mm -hmm. but has no has no limit in that way if you put like a very blurry end of the parts of the body means that this body has no end has no like ha he could be alive with his own physics but you, when you cut or when you like create a blurry part of the body, you also create a, a impression on the on the person. No, why why this body has no arm or why, why this arm is super long or with weird shapes, and it's it's to talk about the the way that the 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 body flows and how the body can can be. Whoa, it's raining. Can be other <laughs> thing. It's just started raining. Uh, can be other thing, and at the same time, your your eye is seeing a, a body, but it's not. It's something different, that is anthropomorphically similar. Mm. So, I like to to make these 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 shapes or these uh, endings of the body or changes to to demonstrate that. The body is not just the, the way that, I see, that we see. It's not just... And there are many bodies that are cut and we don't see. There are many things that we don't... Maybe, really maybe beyond physically. Maybe it's emotionally scarred or cut e and we can't see that. Perfectly. Yes. You talk so much better in English. No, <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing a fantastic job. So the perspective when you design your art and when you're uh, creating your art, do you try to emphasize your emotions so that whoever's looking at it also perceives it the way that you created it? It's one of the points. Like, I know that my things or the things that I made uh, that are a little bit cryptical in the way that I like to be like hieroglyphics. Cry cryptic? Cryptic. Cryptic, exactly. yes. I like to, they, they, they are like hieroglyphics. There is like human expression, a temporal with no timeline, Right. So it could be from the year 2018 or the year uh, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, 2000, like um, 2148, like a, a really long, a uh, really far year, or maybe from the seconds, uh, from from the days of of Jesus Christ, from the year zero. Yeah. Like I really like to make these bodies like without temporary limitations so between this and the and the meaning of the physical emotions or expressions when when i put out the head i got put i i put out the um, he doesn't include the head i i don't include the head usually or i create a different kind of head because i don't want people to to see, to focus on the head or to think about the why the head is like that. So if you don't have head and only have bodies, everyone is equal. Mm. Without head, everyone is equal. We all have bodies, and you don't know. You are not be able to recognize someone only from body, if right. you never saw it or something like that. It's a much body harder. is a body. Yeah. So I put also my symbols that are super simple, but like I'm trying to put together like. Uh, criticisms against against like the way that we talk about the the, um, the language as a, as a, a gun or a, as a social uh, change tool that can change everything 
and also the the body expression for me it's it's really important because talks talks a, a lot about ourselves no how you how you the expression of your body can uh, can 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 change the way that someone sees you yeah exactly it's a, a body language in general like a sub uh, subliminal communication between the artwork and who's perceiving it exactly it's like a su subliminal but liminal also like but y if you understand it you understand it your own way it's free to in interpret it I really like people to interpret it and to feel the connection or the empathy with the with the work that I didn't have maybe or that I I don't know, I, I could don't like one of the things that I made and someone could love it, something like that. I, I really like to, to have a dialogue with, with the public in the streets right. because it's, it's, it's funny and nice when you meet someone and, and explain their own meaning. No? So speaking specifically about uh, when you're on the street and you're explaining to the public, or whoever's looking at your art, what it means. Let's talk about that street art in general. How are you approaching street art? Because I'm in your apartment right now. I see many beautiful artworks all over the walls. How do you approach your artwork on canvas differently from the street? Sometimes it's the same. Sometimes it's very, it's very different. Like I use the the street I use I love the street but I'm, now I'm, my point is like to use the street to to um, communicate with people because I have a, a strong opinion that the the art in the museums die the art that you do, that you don't see and only some people can see is not art it's just like a source a source of communication that uh, some people can have and some people don't. So use the street to paint is the is the closest is the quickest and the um, in my opinion the the best way to to understand with people are to <laughs> yeah neighbors yeah the uh, chairs moving above us <laughs> and now nah, this is the this is the thing so so art in museums or art in general that is not able to be seen is dying in a sense yeah I, I totally think that like when you when you are um, I don't know the graffiti artists are uh, really graffiti artists particular but... people mm -hmm. and I paint in the street I'm super familiar with graffiti but my point is it's a little bit further it's not graffiti that. it's something else it's not mural it's not graffiti it's not murals, yeah. I, maybe it's graffiti because I make it in the, I do it in the night Mm -hmm. with the marker quick and that like my my way to make it it's a graffiti thing but the meaning it's a different story and I don't know I, I like to go to, to museums and see art and that but sometimes it's very political very like it's very close in the sense that only some people can make art or can do art and some people can watch the art and enjoy the art and I want a simple thing, a simple meanings, a, a, a simple shapes with deep meanings, to be able to can to speak with everyone. It's the old lady that it's with the a stroller and cane, yeah, whatever. Like um, the young child passing the young by. Child, the young child really like my work. I don't know why, uh -huh. <laughs> because I feel it like I don't. I sometimes I I feel that it's not for childs, but. But they like it and they understand me sometimes better than older people. Than, than because do you think that is because as we get older, we're so colored by what we are taught and what we are um, influenced by in media, in politics, and that child who's looking at it is looking at it from a more raw perspective? It's just raw. It's yeah. just the... You like it, you don't like it. You don't need to... To choose in your mind why you don't like or the meaning that has for you, no? And yeah, sometimes I, I saw the child and they are the, the ones that most most like or most like feel the the expression that I that I want to do. But I I feel like really really well with the relationship that I have with 
with people and with, when someone knows me because I usually paint in the streets alone and anyone know how is my face or like my name because I never I never sign on the, never on the pieces. pieces so it's super difficult to reach me and when they reach me they, they ask me and ask me and I'm super glad because every every time is like a very open and also I, I feel respected in the streets for uh, the graffiti artist respects me and the muralist respects me so I'm, I feel really really good in, in that sense and I think that at the end even if you don't understand super good the things that I'm painting or making, at least you have the, the sensation or the, you stop for a moment. And this is a, a nice thing, no? I, I'm glad that people can, can think a little bit um, about, about their own self. Because I make the bodies human shape in mm -hmm. the street. They are just you and me. And human size. Human size. Human size. And this is a very a strong point. If you make bodies in human size, or if you do, do bodies in human size, people, it's gonna be more empathic, right? With that, and it's gonna they be relate closer. to it faster. It's, it's gonna be more related. And at the end, the art is just put yourself in a in a medium, and the art is also the the answer of the people. At the end, so you can you cannot uh, escape from that. You need to know it. You can b create art for yourself, but also you need to create art for everyone because, as an artist, you need to reflect the how you say the, 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 the thoughts, the thoughts yes. of the society of your time. This is the the work that you should do if you are an artist because art is unnecessary. Art is many things, but if you took it with a strong behavior and strong beliefs, I don't know, I, I, I always think that art is social changing matter, that can create, can change societies, can improve the, the general thoughts, the education. It's very edu educative, the art, it could be very educative, it's called educativo, uh. and, um, that can Teach people, Teach, educate, educate, yes, yes. educate people. So it's a very big useful tool that if you know how to use it, it's gonna be so much better for society and for yourself. You're gonna be, you're gonna feel good with yourself, and you're gonna feel good with everyone else and with society. And at the end, the, the point is like to create some something not original, not um, but just put but personal. Yeah, just personal. Just put your idea. I know, I know that ev everyone can paint, everyone can create something like that. It's just that you you need to to hit the right spot. And for me, I think that my my own experience, my own life, my different approaches, my super unbalanced things uh, that happened to me also create this 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 difference. Yes. So I advise everyone that is listening this that if you if you feel weird or if you feel different, and you are have like an artistic uh, approach to something, like don't don't uh, be conditioned, condition. Don't shy. It. Don't shy away from it. Don't shy away from it. You are that. So you you need to put your personality in the things that you are gonna make. Don't behave like the rest because it's better or you're going to feel more accepted. You are going to be accepted if you access express yourself. yourself and access yourself. Yeah. Uh, we had spoken previously about uh, a unity within art um, and not just uh, art, different art uh, disciplines relating to one another, but the unity of expression. So when you express yourself through art and uh, other people see it, they are, in a way, connected to that art too. Uh, part of that uh, unity and um, oneness of people uh, can be powerful if it is accepted within the person and, and reflected in the art. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You, like, you with your postcard, po podcast. Podcast, yeah. <laughs> you have 
the strength also to change the things like you, when you were explaining me why you made this and the reasons to 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 talk with someone and someone listening is you're making art for me well thank you <laughs> no it's true because you are trying to put some message in in society to make it better or something like that and with the art is the is the same thing it's not that you need to create a unity in people you need to create different sensations in people then they can talk about it and they they can like improve our human as human beings as a human beings and also with with just a chat or just a, a talk you can like um create this this little um <clears throat> these little sh- shades uh, <laughs> a, a new a a new idea is created when you're able to talk about something and mesh ideas and uh take different disciplines and and combine them exactly yes. exactly yeah. this is the the point you should like make do uh artistic nets or like this this all online thing that is going on it's also helpful to to people because the the the, the art the, the one of the points of the art is like to help people to feel better also right it's very like na- naive sometimes naive. <laughs> perhaps <laughs> yeah but at the same time emotions are the things that we are right so if you have good emotions So on a network, you know, on the internet, the availability of it is exponential. The um the connections that we can create are drastically further and in a sense more powerful and weaker at the same time. You know that duality of the internet allowing us to connect with someone, but then we are connected with so many that we our connections are not as strong. and uh many people use the internet in a very general sense of i'm here to let's say escape reality i'm here to teach myself something but the information that i receive or where i look is not of the highest quality and so what i'm feeding myself is in a sense basura garbage yeah. <laughs> if you feed yourself you nail it. <laughs> yeah if you name if you feed yourself basura mentally emotionally the only thing that you have to provide to anyone else is also garbage it's of little value and that's not to say that someone who is told that they are garbage that doesn't make it true but if you feel within yourself that what you are sharing is not up, up to the caliber the level that you want it to be you can find different ways of raising yourself. And part of that is sometimes reaching out to someone through the internet, through whatever means and connecting with them. Yeah, the connection is is basically the way that that we have to to don't feel alone or to 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 express ourselves with someone else, no? Sometimes it's difficult because you have like emotion emotion troubles or like your own emotions you can you can handle sometimes your own emotions and sometimes go to the social network and see other people's life or see your your own life in the internet that is so different mm-hmm. from your life yeah, as you live yeah it's it's this is different but it's the same at the end no i think that this need of connection or like um of knowing or like more and more information no that we have it sometimes it's, it could be dangerous because you can lose yourself also with the internet and with the social network if you what do you mean by lose yourself if you like if you keep eating and eating a screen and like a scroll a scroll a scroll could be facebook could be whatever like a scroll a scroll a scroll and have this boom 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 images in your in your head and in your in your brain this is going to be a very big condition and to later like have real relationships you know you don't know how to have a real relationship because your relationship is through an unrealistic platform. Yeah, it's so, I don't know if that was the right term, but you understand? Yeah, it's in the air. air yes, basically. Yeah. Yes, uh it's all conceptual, it's not reality. You think that also like Yes, I I think that it's very important to 
part of this, part of the podcast, the the art, as you call it, which is so cool, uh, <laughs> is it's a real conversation. It's a, a real communication beyond texting, the acknowledgement of things that are happening around you. And when you don't have the face-to-face -face conversations, like you said, you get lost in the screen and the scrolling, and there's less of a a depth, we'll call it, a depth to what you feel is real. When you talk to someone and you, and you really relate to them, or when you talk to someone and you learn something through them, through something they have to offer, you know, it's not like asking for advice. Sometimes when you ask for advice, you ask for it and you don't really want it. You want to be told what you want to hear. Exactly. But when you talk to someone and you are open to what they have to share as a whole, you are more receptive to a whole plethora of ideas that you're unaware that could come from another person. Yeah, I, I agree totally, totally with you. I don't know if, if you at the end like don't know how to create good relations if, if you have over stimulus. When, when you read a, a book in voice, mm -hmm. like when you read it, da, 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 the message keeps into your mind. Like when, you, we, when we talk, I'm listening to your words, but if I'm reading your words or if I'm watching your images, it's gonna be a totally, totally different like sensation to you, and you are not gonna learn, or you are gonna learn in a in a wrong way, no? You are gonna. Uh, I'll say people learn in different manners. So because we have language as a whole, it is the deepest form of communication when you talk to someone, when you can express yourself and and explain yourself. When you're looking at something, some people want to look at something because they perceive it differently or just listen or, or touch or whatever it might be that they absorb the information. When you communicate with someone and you can use a language as a whole, there is a depth to it that is not, not that it is equal, but it is not of the same thing. So if we think of it like, uh, I recently read this uh, analogy and I'll use it, it's different mountains in a sea. Each island is a mountain for the way that we uh, absorb information and learn. So if there's a, a vast ocean and there's islands that are mountains, each mountain is listening, speaking, seeing, uh, touch, you know, emotional connection. When you go, when you see the, the islands above the water, they look separate and different. But once you go down under the water, they're all connected to the same platform at the bottom. They all go down onto the same thing. But you have to be willing to go down. You have to be willing to go into the depth and, and take a look at what is happening to, to receive that. The thing is like we live in the surface right now. We only yeah. watch the surface and all the... I use computers, I use the phone. Right. right. But all these devices, no? Uh, create a, they are like a superficial thing also, right. it's, it's weird, no? It's a, it's a flat thing. It's a yeah. flat thing, and it's also a flat relationship, it's a flat a behavior that you're going to have, because you're not going to be nervous, maybe, you're not going to be like spontaneous, because you, you can't, and at the end it's like, I, 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 I was a funny thing, like I was walking on the street, and I, I usually walk and knew where, where my pieces are, no, on the, right. on, on the street. Your street work. Yeah, yeah so I, I, turned, I turned right and I was watching like, um, yeah, some person was like with the phone, like so happy, like uh, touching and touching the screen and touching the screen. I saw one of my things, I put the most strange face on the wall, like, huh? <laughs> and then boom, continue to the, to the screen and it was like, I'm, I'm mind blowing for me like wow wow it's incredible how how it's like society when when you are in the phone like you are outside you are just paying attention to something and you so, something like oh this is not right I'm gonna come back to the screen you mm -hmm. know it's it was super strange for me or like was super strong no like n not even not even with my piece my pieces like with every art that's in the street or every art that is in a museum or, or movie or, or 
like a uh, experimental movie or something like that. You get bored, you begin with Pull out your phone. phone, you find stimulation from another you area. You find stimulation and you don't think that the other stimulation is different stimulation, but it's better stimulation. Because for me, it's fast food. Internet sometimes is fast food, you know? Yes. It's, you just eat and eat fast food and it's going to be great. It's going to be yummy, whatever. Yeah. But you are not yummy. enjoying <laughs> the cooking part. You are not cooking the ingredients. You are not preparing all the stuff. So you just eat the thing that they have to you. What do you think are things that someone can do in order to maybe enjoy that cooking and enjoy something beyond the fast food? Is it, do you have any tips, let's call them? I, I don't have tips. I'm, I'm super bad to give you advices. I don't know, but it's the... the well, th what do you do? The thing that I, sh I usually do, it's like trying to focus in, in, the, little, in the little things. It, it's so typical, but it's, uh, when, you, when you focus on the beauty of the things, just because they exist, and you are not uh, trying to have like deeper meanings or I was trying to use the things. Like if, if you saw a plant, mm -hmm. you, you can see, oh, it's a beautiful plant, da, 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 da. But when you, when you saw the plant and you saw the plant, like, ah, oh, this is a plant that makes um, oranges. So I, I'm gonna grab the orange and I'm gonna eat it. This is the, the thing, like you, you should focus on the, um, on the things that makes, that uh, create a, a good feeling with you, but don't uh, not having like um, easy ways. You need to put yourself difficult. I usually when when I'm trying to focus or something like that, I usually draw without having an, a sketch before. Just just draw with the pen and just like taking risks. Mm -hmm. I, I I recommend people like to take a little bit risks or like um, trying something that they think that they can't do. Right. Try everything that you think that you can't do because maybe someone told you that you can't or maybe you try one time and you can't or something like that. You, like if you keep trying something that, that you think that you can't do, you're going to know at the end many things because you are trying everything. It's not trying everything, but... You're trying the things that people told you or that you believed wouldn't work. Yeah. And by trying them, then you'll actually know whether or not they work. Exactly. It's not some movie that you play in your head of this is my future and this is what will happen. This it's, is going to happen. It's you taking that risk and saying, hey, like, can I make this work? Exactly. I usually, everyone has, has a, it's afraid of something, no? I could be afraid of some kind of um, behaviors. You can be afraid of, of something else. But when you know your, your, your fear in, in that sense, you can deal with, with your fear, no? Your, the fear is like a little child that it's gonna cry sometimes, but it's also you. Because you, you can't get rid of your little child because the, the child is gonna cry when, when it's gonna be scared, it's gonna be angry or, or, or shut up. It's, it's funny, no? Like we, we are trained to not, to don't be childs, but at the end, we are more childish if we don't accept our fears, you know? Yeah. Like a child. Right. <laughs> it's weird. Like running from your fear instead of uh, walking up to it and seeing if yeah. it actually is a fear. Yeah, you're going to be a, like a child in the good sense, that it's open to the fear and to feel. But if you close your 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 feelings in that sense you're gonna be like a child in a in the typical way you're gonna behave like a, oh, like a child like, like a throwing a tantrum and exactly yeah it's like a balance or like a contradiction right duality duality yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all duality plus and mi minus plus and minus society is is ruled by duality we i live in a really dual country I think that you live also in a really dual country, mm -hmm. dual cities, dual people, and the thing is like when you are dual, that is not a bad thing. You can feel right or wrong, but if I don't try to to have a balance, but at the end, if you don't 
take some opportunities or something like that, you are going to be very in the minus. But if you are too much in the plus, you are going to be greedy, you are going to be, you know, it's, it's hard. I, it's like a wave. I always live like, and I, I thought it like in a wave. Oh, I, I hope that I, I answered you correctly. <laughs> no, yes, you did. <laughs> Definitely. And have given me extra. Perfect. So, as, a, uh, as an artist, if someone wanted to f look at your work and, and to see it and to reach you, would you, would you allow them to do so? Do, do you have like a, an Instagram yeah. handle that you would share with people? Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange because I usually... When, when people find me, it's because someone told, uh, it's Through from word mouth, of mouth to mouth. Right. How it's called? W um, word of mouth. Word of mouth. Word nice. of mouth, yeah. And at the end, like, they reach me and they talk me. And it's, it's, it's been weird because when, when, I, when I grow more in my art thing, like, my name is going to appear in some point and I, I'm going to need to have my name to be... To make the exhibition, so like to be like if someone wants me to create some piece of art or some film or some photos or something like that, at the end it's gonna be I need to be to be me. But like my point now with the street art and with the art with no signatures like anonymous, it's called no? uh, anonymous, yes, anonymous art. Yeah, no? it's also very important for me. So it's weird to me to to create a balance with that because I have a strong beliefs in social art and in no art with no paid, mm. art, no, free art. Free art, not paid art where you have to pay to see it. Yeah, but I need to live also. Also you need to live, yes, a duality. It's, it's just like that. And, but eventually I, I think I'm gonna like open a little bit more and I'm, I'm good with my, with my nickname, mm -hmm. that I have a nickname. What is your nickname? It's Greyhound. Greyhound. <laughs> Say it in Spanish. Galgo, Galgo. Yes. Galgo. Gal Galgo. Gargo. With L. Gar Galgo. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and with that, I'm, it's going like pretty, pretty well, but I, but I need to open myself and take more risk and make more projects. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a project with, with, my, with my friend Leandro now and with other friends and creating all exhibition together. Like this net of artists. Yeah, that could a network of artists, yes. Exactly. Uh, so if someone wanted to see you who's listening, where would they go? Yeah. <laughs> you can reach me in the 661. <laughs> uh, um, I have a, an Instagram account. And I also have like my face, Facebook profile. How do you spell your Instagram account? My Instagram account, it's... If, if you want to write it, write it now, eh? <laughs> yeah, you write it down, not cursive, and I will repeat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the arroba? Oh, yes, the at sign. M-A-N-D-I-B-U-L-A-G-R-I-S. Mandibula gris. Mandibula la gris. Mandibula gris. Perfect. Perfecto. Genial. <laughs> Italian, Spanish, I can't keep up with you. No, yeah, it's, you are getting better, man. No, thank you very much. And thank you very much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate no, it. No, thank you, Kyle. It's been a pleasure. Totally. Well, guys, thank you for joining us for another episode on the Disconnection Podcast, where we aim to inform, inspire, and close the disconnections in your life. My name is Kyle Nielsen, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Disconnection.